Okay, so today we're going to go over stairs. Um, so there's stairs uh, are right up here under the architecture tab under circulation. Um, so there's two different types of stairs. There's stair by component and stair by sketch. Um, you can turn a stair by component into a stair by sketch if um, if you eventually want to adjust and modify a little bit more. Um, stair by component is kind of just a basic um, basic run-of-the-mill kind of stair. Stair by sketch allows you to kind of customize things a little bit more. Um, so first we'll go over stair by component. So I'm going to click stair by component. Um, now up here uh, I can select where my where my first click is going to be anchored. So do I want to be in the center of the stair, the left, the right? So if you want something up against a wall you can um, you can basically uh, click on the edge of the wall and drag if this is set up so that your your anchor point is on the outside of the stair there. Um, I'm going to leave it at center um, and then actual run width uh, I will leave it three feet you could change this to four feet, five feet, whatever your uh, whatever your stair width is going to be. Um, so then another thing that you'll want to check before you start drawing is your uh, constraints over here so I only have two levels in here. I have level one and level two. So my base is obviously level, level one. My top level is level two. Um, it's something to keep in mind if you set up levels that are, um, like maybe you have a level one ceiling level. It's going to jump. If your base is level one, it's going to automatically default to whatever the next level up is. So even if that next level up is only six inches higher than level one, it's going to default to that. So it's something to keep in mind here uh, to make sure that those are set before you start sketching. So then we've got a desired stair height of 10 feet. This is telling me that the difference between level 1 and level 2 is 10 feet. And I don't have any offsets set here, so it's the 10 feet that are in between there. Um, Multi-story top level. Uh, you, can change, you can change this um, and say you know if you if you want to run up a couple different levels you could adjust that um, so you could go level one level two level three um, if you wanted to um, and then it's going to automatically compute uh, your riser height um, how many risers you'll need and then this is something that you can set you can set your uh, tread depth um, right now it's the default is 11 inches and up here you can see the properties of this it's an 11 inch tread and a 7 inch max riser so I could come in under edit type and change the max riser height from 7 inches to something else and it will automatically change this riser height and compute something different to give me the maximum riser height I can get um, out of that uh, distance there so I'll hit OK here and so basically I'm gonna click and I'm gonna drag and as I click and drag, you can see down below there, it'll say, it says kind of down below this, the stair sketch here, it says six risers created, 12 remaining. As I pull, it's going to tell me how many more I need to make to get the desired number of risers that I've got set over here. Um, so I'm going to go about halfway and say nine created, nine remain, and then I'm going to click. So it creates this little, um, this automatic sketch of stairs here. It's got uh, stringers on either side um, and it's got my treads and my risers and everything built in. Um, now it's going to automatically snap to these uh, these lines here, the edge of my stringer and the edge of my stair. And what I can do is I can come out here, I can kind of come wherever I want and I can click and then start dragging another stair and it's automatically going to create a, um, a landing there. And so I can keep dragging and then I'll stop when I get to 18. So I've made all 18 risers. Now I can come back in and say I want, I'm going to move this. I'm going to move this back a little bit. Maybe I don't want, want my landing quite that long. Um, when I click on this it'll give me a couple toggles where I can drag, drag the width of these a little bit differently. Um, I can do these independently or I can type in um, an actual width here. So there's five feet. Um, this one was attached to that. Um, and so maybe I, 
maybe I want them both to be five feet, I can automatically set that. So if I wanted to come back in and change my, uh, my width as opposed to changing it up here when we first started, um, I can do that. So now that I've got this pretty much set up, I can hit my check mark here and it's automatically going to create this set of stairs and it's automatically going to put a handrail on that as well so there's the stair in 3D that we just created um, it automatically gives a little gooseneck on to adjust the, for the height of the landing and everything um, on the railings and overall pretty simple pretty easy um, one thing you may you may want you can see it's got a cut line here and it's showing a whole bunch of stuff above the cut line you more than likely you probably don't want to see um, the stair above your cut line uh, and you might want to clean this up a little bit to clean this up you go under visibility and graphics over here and then under the model categories up here um, you can scroll down and get to stairs and if I drop that down there are all these categories that with an above beforehand if we turn all of those off and hit apply it gets rid of all of those so you'll see these are still there that's because those are not part of the stair that's part of the railing um, but you'll also see there's these dotted lines still here um, that's showing you where the riser is and you may not want to see that if you want to turn that off as well um, that's just riser lines here so we'll turn that off and then we'll come up here to railings and turn all of the above options off as well and hit apply and now we have a pretty clean graphic as far as the stair goes if I click on this and then hit edit type I can come in here and under the edit type um, there's calculation rules you can change how how this uh, calculates um, different things if you really wanted to uh, I would recommend if you don't know um, I wouldn't recommend changing that too much um, it works pretty well as it is um, as far as the math goes unless there's some very specific uh, situation where you really need it to um, construction so this gives you the run type right here two inch tread one inch nosing with a quarter inch riser so this is the construction of the um, of the stair itself so the treads are two inches thick it's got a one inch nosing on it um, so basically the tread is going to extend one inch beyond the riser and then the riser is a quarter inch back um, is a quarter inch vertical uh, piece uh, landing type this is non monolithic landing that's basically uh, monolithic would be if it's a, like a concrete pour or something like that non monolithic being it's like a framed um, construction and you can kind of come in here and see uh, different um, properties to each one of those. So you can adjust the tread material, the riser material, adjust the tread thickness, um, the tread profile, any nosing profiles, all of that stuff um, is set within here. Uh, and then down here are the supports. So maybe you don't want stringers on either side. Maybe you just want a single stringer through the middle. Uh, you can change these to uh, to none and then you could have a middle support and then you could ch also change your your cut mark um, if you don't like this as a cut mark you can change the look of that so if I change that it gets rid of my two side um, stringers and then it creates a a single um, support system there so that in a nutshell is a uh, stair by component um, a few other quick things um, so if I go I'm going to hide these so if I go in and I'm looking at the railing from the side um, I can come into this railing and I can change the structure of it so right now um, I could set different horizontals so let's say I I want something at a horizontal at six inches and I want another horizontal at two foot six inches um, and I can set profiles I can set materials for those and I can apply that and it's going to 
create those um, those horizontals. Get rid of that. Um, and then balusters. So this is telling you how your railing is constructed here. Um, my baluster is a three quarter inch square post individually. Um, the base of it is whatever the host is. So right now the host is the stair, so it's coming down to the stair. Um, and then it's going up to the top rail, so it's meeting the top rail. And then they're spaced four inches on center. So you can set all these different parameters to adjust how this ends up looking. Um, and then if you want special conditions at like the start, um, a corner, or an end, you can create different balusters. Um, so maybe you have you set up a uh, a newel at the start and the end. Um, you could create that um, and essentially uh, create whatever you want here. Um, then this is the main pattern up here. So I could adjust this. I could create a couple different ones. Um, if I wanted to change, like maybe I wanted the three quarter inch square newel, and then I wanted a round newel or something like that. I could say, okay, distance from previous, four inches, duplicate, I've got another one that's four inches from previous, and then I change this to like a one inch round. And I hit apply, and now every other one, it's spaced four inches on center, this is a three quarter square, now it's a one inch round, three quarter square, one inch round. Um, so that's, you can go through and create the, the main pattern of this. Um, by creating this uh, this kind of layering effect here. Um, so this one says justify at the beginning, you can justify at the end, center, spread pattern to fit, um, kind of thing. And then the excess fill length, uh, it'll ask what do you want to do with this? Um, do you want to uh, just stop the pattern? Uh, do you want to do nothing? Um, and if you create uh, something out of the excess fill. What's the spacing there um, on that on that excess fill? Um, so it's all stuff that you can modify and to create the um, overall look that you're going for um, in your railing. One thing that you can do, and maybe you don't want your railing to stop right here. Maybe you prefer this to kind of loop around and or maybe you prefer it to kind of come out and continue down, you can hit tab as you're highlighting over the railing and grab the top rail here and hit edit rail. And it's going to give you almost this little like sketch here. And it says rectangular handrail, two inch by two inch. Um, you can hit edit path. And then it gives you these sketch tools. And you can come in and say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to grab the very end here, and maybe I'm going to pull on this, and then come down. And then if I hit my check mark, now the top of my handrail kind of terminates in a little bit different way. So you can change the way that your handrails terminate. You can create profiles and that sort of stuff um, to see how you want all of that to work there. Um, so that's also an option um, to kind of customize your handrails a little bit so that they don't just stop at the very last, um, the very last tread there. So that is stair by component and a little bit about railings. So now we will go into stair by sketch. So if I go stair by sketch, basically there are two com two uh, elements that make up a stair by sketch. You've got the boundary and then you've got the riser. So your boundary, you have to have a boundary on either side and a riser has to end on a boundary line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start drawing a, a stair here. So I've got two boundary lines here, and then maybe I want to customize the shape of this a little bit. So maybe my my stair, I want to kind of loop out a little bit, and then come back. And then I believe I made that 11 feet wide, 
So I'm going to offset this by 11 feet. Okay, so I've created this sort of crazy pattern here. And now I'm going to draw my risers in. So it's still going to tell me that I need 18 risers. And so every time I draw a riser line, it's going to tell me down here at the bottom of the stair sketch, I've got 17 remaining. And I'm just going to go through and put in some random lines. I would never actually create a stair like this. Don't worry, everybody. It's a trip hazard. So I've got nine remaining. Let's say, let's go here. we got one there. Um, seven remaining. Six. Five. Four. Three. Okay, so I've got all my all my risers created here, and maybe I I'm looking at this and I'm like, eh, you know, it's okay, but it's I, I really want something kind of different here at the bottom, so I'm gonna actually pull this back. But now this has to end on a boundary line, so maybe I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna, whoops, I want riser line. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to loop this around so that it ends like this. And I want some sort of entry like this. So I'm going to hit my, my check mark. It's going to go through and compute everything here. And it's processing down here. Trying to create this ridiculous stair. Slowly but surely. And the error that you got down here was it just said some of these lines are slightly off the sketch axis. If you have something that's, um, say you have a line that's at like 46 degrees or something like that, uh, since it's so close to 45, it's going to alert you that, hey, if you wanted to draw that at a 45, it's not quite right. Um, so then it's going to create this stair. And I've got this wonky, crazy looking stair now. So it doesn't look like it's going up all that much, but if you look at the actual elevation, it starts to make a little more sense. Okay, so that is the benefit of stair by sketch. It will automatically, it, you can sketch out and create any sort of kind of custom stair uh, profile that you want there. Um, so if you want to do s some sort of different flared end or anything like that, that would be a s uh, stair by sketch. And if your if your stair is mostly a stair by component kind of stair, and but then you wanted to uh, you wanted to do like a flared end, what you can do is create a stair by component, and then if when you go into the edit, you can grab an individual piece of this and hit convert, and it'll convert it. And it says converting to automatic landing or a run or component to a custom base sketch. Um, component is irreversible. It says, okay, that's, that's fine. And then you hit edit sketch. And then it opens up basically a sketch version of that piece of your stair. So you could, you could draw it as a component based stair and then come in and tweak the ends and that sort of stuff however you really like to. So, turn that off. Okay, and I think for the most part that is a basic introduction to stairs.